Wow, well, thanks again for being with us today. Those stories just get me, you know, just average <laughs> Canadians just getting out there and, and being the love of the father to these kids. And so yes. let's talk more about that. So um, I'm wondering, first of all, if you could share a story. Do you have any stories that come to the top of your mind when you think about this whole issue of fostering and adoption? Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple in mind. Um, and I think the thing that sticks out to me for the first one, it's actually our own story of our first son. And it's because I think so many people get scared um, that they don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite quotes is about God does not call the equipped, but he equips the called. Mm -hmm. And so for our, our oldest son, he actually, uh, he was in foster care and um, he had prenatal exposure and three families actually said no to him. And then along we come, 19 and 20 years old, we were not equipped. <laughs> we hadn't started our careers yet. We were renting a basement suite. We didn't own our own home. We were nobody. We were on paper teenagers. We probably looked crazy. <laughs> and you got accepted. We got accepted. Because a lot of people would think, well, don't even bother trying because you're not going to get accepted. Oh, exactly. By... Exactly. But we had an amazing social worker and she knew our hearts. She knew our passion and she knew our ability. Right. And I wasn't even one of those, you know, teenagers who babysit all the time. And because that we were willing to say yes, because even though we saw past that we were nothing um, and that God had bigger plans for us, we were given that opportunity to adopt our son. And although this isn't the goal, um, he ended up having no special needs. But all, all anyone could see on his paperwork was, oh, he's probably going to have significant special needs. And now we have this amazing son. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of kids with special needs. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that you don't want that, but he has such an amazing life ahead of him. Mm -hmm. He has a family now. And that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for two nobodies <laughs> to just follow what God was calling them to do. And then I have another friend. Um, she actually uh, went with her husband on the wait list for China and it was taking years and years and she adopted um, while she was waiting she adopted from other places and at one point um, she, she was on the wait list about eight years and her agency said it's just never going to happen we need to close your file and she said no like I know that this is what God is calling us to do and uh, they said well we'll keep your file open if you will just admit that it's never going to happen <laughs> and so she moved agencies <laughs> um, went to a new adoption agency and literally a month after saying that is when she first saw a picture of her son on a waiting child list and he is now home. Wow. He is an amazing little boy from China Ugh. that would never have been a part of her family if they hadn't persevered. Because, you know, adoption... It, it requires a lot of patience and a lot of perseverance and you're going through this process that is crazy and her and her husband didn't give up and now this child has a forever family mm. she's been blessed by this amazing little boy wow. and it's just all through the power of God powerful man you're just messing with my heart here <laughs> <laughs> so powerful about it. Well, we cry all the time oh, over things. Wow. <laughs> rightfully so uh, where do people get started somebody's watching this their hearts just burning you know they're elbowing their husband saying honey we got to do this yeah. you know our wife um, where do they start? Yeah, so I think that's the one thing is people get so overwhelmed and there's no, um, you know, website out there with all the information on where to go and do I adopt out of foster care? Do I adopt internationally? Do I do a domestic adoption? So one of the first places you can start, of course, is with us. Mm. We reach all across Canada. And what is your website? Homeforeverychild.org. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so they can start there and get all the information. Um, they can call us. We'll give them a consultation on how to start because depending on what a person is open to, um, special needs or certain ages or what they're finances are. It's all going to help determine what route is going to be best for them. Um, so we're going to walk them through that. We have a great Adoption 101 booklet that we can email to people to give them all the basics Amazing. and just get them started. Um, if they're a person that already knows uh, what direction they're headed, they can phone their local uh, child welfare system or local adoption agency and then they'll get them started. Um, you know, they'll take their information, get started on a home study and then just get them along the way. And then even if they do go out on their own, we can be there to support them as well because the process so many people have questions like oh my gosh what does a home study entail and is this normal and sometimes they just want to share with people guess what we just emailed or mailed away our application and no one else cares <laughs> but the adoption community really does and we want to be there to support them um, and if they're just wanting more information on uh, different topics I personally run a blog uh, mylovelycrazylife.com <laughs> and I write all about um, adoption my lovely care. crazy life yes. <laughs> that's pretty unforgettable it's, that's it's very um, you know reminiscent of what my life is it's lovely 
and it's crazy. <laughs> but I write about FASD, I write about the adoption, foster care, wow. about some of the things you go through when you're in the process. I just think the more research a family can do, the better. So those are some of the places that you can get started. Wow, you are amazing. <laughs> amazing. You're my hero. We just met. You're just my normal. hero. <laughs> this is amazing. So what would you say then, first of all, two groups of people, those that are just wanting to kind of get started or kind of considering this, and the second group of people is to our, our leaders. What would be your messages to those two groups of people? Um, for people wanting to get started, I would just say pray about it and then don't don't be scared. Just take a leap of faith. Um, and you know, it, adoption isn't necessarily for everyone. But if you are feeling a tug about this and passionate about it, it doesn't have to be actually having a child come in your home. So pray about what you think it is in your life that you're supposed to do. Because even though not everyone can adopt, everyone can be involved in adoption. Right. You can support a family. You can fund a charity. You can um, help the kids once they're home. I mean, even just uh, adoptive parents that have these crazy lives, it would mean the world just to get a supportive phone call or to go bring them a meal or anything like that. Okay. Um, Powerful to our leaders. <laughs> to our political leaders. I, I think the one thing I would say to them is we need more funding. Um, there are not enough social workers. I used to work in the, in the government for a while and there's not enough social workers. There's not enough funding uh, to run what needs to happen. Uh, kids shouldn't be in foster care for very long. If reunification is no longer possible, which is always the first goal, but if it's not possible, we need to get these kids adopted and we need to get them adopted soon. Mm -hmm because attachment and trauma make significant impacts on these kids' lives, and the longer that they're in foster care and not in their forever home, the more it's going to affect their lives. So we just wanna get them into their families. So if we can have more social workers and more funding in those government agencies, then we can facilitate adoption so much faster so that we're not affecting these kids' lives. Powerful, let's make it a priority in <laughs> Canada, right? Even more than it is right now. Oh, yeah. Man, Amanda, our time is already gone today, but you are just absolutely amazing. So you, you talked about uh, support Supporting charities of which you are one. So give us your website one more time. Uh, it's homeforeverychild.org. Homeforeverychild.org. If people yep. want to donate or get more information, they can also check out your blog. And yep. you are just such an inspiration. Last question. How old are you? Oh, uh, I just turned 35 a week ago. So 35, <laughs> mom of eight, yeah. doing this thing. You're such an inspiration. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for your life and for your work. God bless you. Thank you.